At the beginning of the 20th century, although there was a groundbreaking work like the Ford Model T, the automotive industry was still in a period of technological exploration, with a wide variety of designs for the power source, power transmission, and driving control of vehicles. Of course, due to technological limitations at that time, many structures were far less reliable than they are today, such as brake systems and clutches. For this reason, many designers were trying to find ways to improve them or simply bypass them with new technologies. French designer Marcel Layet was one of the explorers in the automotive technology field. Originally an aircraft designer, he completed his first airplane in 1909. However, his interest was focused on land rather than the sky, and he proposed the idea of using a propeller as the power source for cars, believing that this would be the future trend in automotive technology. In fact, using a propeller to drive a car was not impossible, and this design had many advantages. The most significant advantage was that the engine was directly connected to the propeller, without the need for a clutch or gearbox. The driver could adjust the thrust and speed of the car by controlling the throttle, brakes, and even the propeller torque. Marcel Layet completed the first design in 1913 and conducted extensive testing on the prototype, laying the foundation for his subsequent designs. Perhaps influenced by the First World War, his second propeller car did not begin construction until 1919 and was showcased at the Paris Motor Show in 1921, claiming to have attracted a lot of attention. This propeller car incorporated many aircraft design technologies and indeed resembled an aircraft without wings. To reduce the weight of the car, Marcel Layet manufactured a simple integrated chassis, with the body made of plywood and a large number of aluminum parts. It had seats for a driver and a passenger, arranged in a tandem configuration similar to an airplane. These structures reduced the weight of the car to a very low level, with a total weight of only 625 pounds, about 283 kilograms, including the engine. An 8-horsepower engine was installed at the front of the car, driving a four-blade propeller. The top of the propeller was fitted with a circular structure to prevent accidental injury during rotation. In order to maximize the propeller thrust, the car body was streamlined like an airplane, with a smooth and unobtrusive design. The driver could control the engine power with the throttle and use the brakes for braking. Interestingly, the brake pads were aluminum pads designed and manufactured by Marcel Layet himself. Although they were very lightweight, were they really reliable in terms of the heat resistance of aluminum? The direction control of the vehicle was achieved by adjusting the rear wheel, similar to the way aircraft wings are controlled. If the front wheel was used for steering, the car could easily flip over. This car was known as the wingless airplane, and its lightweight design truly lived up to this name. In 1927, Subsequent production vehicles achieved a maximum speed of 171 km per hour on professional racetracks, which was dust raising in those days. With an elongated body and wings attached, it was essentially a light aircraft. However, the public's reaction to this type of car was not very positive, and by 1925, only 30 cars had been sold sporadically. In fact, Propeller cars had many inherent flaws, such as the difficulty for the driver to achieve precise speed control and the immense wind force generated by the propeller, which made it difficult to use in rainy, snowy, or dusty conditions. The propeller itself was like a walking meat grinder, affecting the driver's visibility and posing a greater risk of serious injury in traffic accidents. Marcel Layet was not the only one with such ideas, but none of them were successful. After a few rare attempts, people found that this design did not align with the direction of automotive development, and there was almost no further research on it after the 1920s. There are still a small number of collectors who have preserved some propeller cars. Due to their rarity and very limited production, these collectibles are quite expensive, with the estimated value of a slightly better conditioned car being 20 million US dollars.